In this video, you have the whole BMM coaching team and we are going to react to a clip from Sorry to Bother You. Hmm, this is an interesting clip. It's called The White Voice. Stay tuned. Hey, young blood, let me give you a tip. Use your white voice. Man, I ain't got no white voice. Oh, come I've on, you know what I mean. You have a white voice in there. You can use it. It's like when you're pulled over by the police. Oh, no, I just use my regular voice when that happens. I just say, back the fuck up off the call and don't nobody oh, get out. Right, man, I'm just trying to give you some game. Uh, you want to make some money here? Then read the script with a white voice. Well, people say I talk with a white voice anyway, so why did no, I... No, they say that about me. Well, you don't talk white enough. I'm not talking about Will Smith's wife. I'm talking about the real deal. Like this young blood. Hey, Mr. Kramer, this is Langston from Regal View. What? I didn't catch you at the wrong time, did I? <laughs> oh my gosh, so I don't know where to start because it's hilarious but real. I will say as someone whose sales career started in a call center, there was a lot of code switching. Like yeah. there was a lot of code switching on voices because yeah. there was this narrative that you needed to be palatable. <laughs> right for many different environments mm -hmm. and um i've been told many a times that i that my appearance may not match how my voice sounds right uh, on the phone so yes. definitely some code switching happening yes. okay and everyone doesn't go through this but <laughs> yes it happens and yeah. code switching is a thing code switching was and probably still is a thing corporate mm -hmm. yeah. um it's there's this right. sense that you have to sound a certain way to get results, I can remember going to meetings. I will call out one company. I won't tell you who it is in Kentucky, <laughs> and I do remember <laughs> not getting anywhere. I do not believe. I, I think there was a disconnect. <laughs> let's yeah. just put, let's mm, let's yeah. leave it there. Yeah. So um, got nowhere at all yeah. once I walked in the door. Mm -hmm. Flew to Kentucky, walked in the door, and I was like, "The voice it's does me. not match." It's me. Human. Like no, I called you. It can't be. <laughs> not the show we were expecting. I, when I, we talked, remember? Yeah. We laughed yeah. about that thing that was funny. Huh. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it does, it happens, and I believe it's still happening. But I have to say, Danny Glover, that was all the way in. Yeah. Like all the way. Oh. That had to be a voiceover. That had there's, to be. There's, there's no, no way. Right. No. Like that's no. kind of no. a way that no. Danny Glover could produce <laughs> yeah. that sound. You know, no. because no. there, you, yeah. there's a, a white voice Wait, down deep does. inside. That's hilarious. I think everybody does have one deep down. Maybe What's, if he was sucking on helium. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah it, it's interesting when we talk about, you know, just how sales has evolved and the needs and the buyers. And I think it's funny, but it also reflects that, you know, there are many different demographics who felt like they had to fit um, yeah, in conform. a certain, yes. You know, there are women who felt like they had to take on very masculine qualities. Yes. Uh, yes. Right? Talk about that part. Yeah, right? Yes. As, as a black woman, there have been times where I felt like I had to assimilate to mm -hmm. belong. Yes. And one of the things that I think that um, creates a longer or a greater challenge for sales mm -hmm. is that, when we talk about a corporation, if they say they value diversity internally, that's a culture they can adopt. The thing about salespeople is we have to be influential and compelling with our buyer yeah, right. externally. Yes. Externally, yes. right? That's, that so, can be a whole different right. situation. So you might have a buyer who does not value diversity, yeah. yes. and so it creates another challenge. So it's just really interesting, you know, for us to really have the conversation. It's layers, about. Yep. yeah. Layers. And we're laughing about this, but. This is a serious issue that has created, you know, um, inequalities and all of the things. Mm -hmm. It's just something that is, you know, it's entertainment and they're bringing yeah. it out and they're they're kind of putting it in a sphere so that you can actually find some humor in it. But at the end of the day, I do feel like we're getting to a space where you can come with your full self. Yeah. I feel like it's getting better. I just know that it was not this way 20 years ago. I mean, but to take it to an extreme, if you're calling somebody's phone, regardless of if it's a white voice, a black voice, an aggressive voice, a friendly voice, yes. there is a voice There's that a needs voice. to be used. Yes. Or, yeah. cause I'ma tell you, you call my phone sounding crazy. Right. And it's, it's gonna be a problem. And even just the pace of your voice, right? So yeah. let's add that layer in there. Yeah. You know, so when you hear someone's voicemail and it's like, my name's John, leave a message, I'll get back to you. I'm not gonna leave a message that goes, Oh, hey, hi, John. John. It's Cheryl. 
I was calling to, you're yeah, not doing yeah, this, yeah, right? Yeah. So there's all of these complexities that come together and that's to me what makes sales what it is. Yeah. You have to you have to be listening for what's important to yeah. the buyer. And I'm also I'm going to poke the box a little bit yes. here and we talk about speaking like whether it is in our social media posts on LinkedIn mm. or in our marketing message we talk about using the buyer's language yes. to create rapport, create that that relationship and connection. And so in some ways, this is another form of using yeah. the buyer's language, yep. their yep. tone, their pacing, yeah. you know, to a ridiculous, to and a sometimes ridiculous unfortunate point. level. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So I definitely think it's about, a, it's an interesting dynamic for sales, but we're not done. Let's watch no, the rest of this train wreck. All right, so we got a little <laughs> bit more to watch. Here we yes. go. I'm Boots Riley. I'm the writer and director of Sorry to Bother You. Ooh. This is our main telemarketing floor. Lakeith Stanfield plays Cassius Green, who has recently discovered a magical power to make his voice sound like it's overdubbed by a white actor. And this is his first successful sale using that white voice, which disguises the fact that he's actually black to the callers. We needed this so that he could own his success and we, we, we could feel happy for him. Spin doctors. Classic. Tim, I want to chop it up more, but I got to get to my squash game. His voice is not matching his language, though. He said chop it up. We're about to see Michael X. Summers as his manager, Johnny, who actually only lives two blocks away from where we're shooting. He's local, but I don't think he's going to be local very much anymore. He's a great actor. And they're two crazy actors who this scene shows how great two crazy people can be together. This is a scene that... We had 14 wardrobe changes for it. It's like the our kind of shoe. thing that <laughs> producers would like to cut out because it costs a lot of money. You don't usually have stuff like this. And the question is, why do you need it? But we need it because we need to ride this wave with it. <laughs> All movies should have a high five montage. And this one, the music one? that's yeah. playing is by my band, that's The right. And it's called Oh Yeah, All Right, Hell Yeah, That's Tight. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh hell. Yeah, something that's right. <laughs> it's um it's interesting to see the behind the scenes of this and that's really cool. I'd be curious to learn more about like oh my just the thoughts behind that scene. Okay, I have not seen this movie and now Ooh. I'm sold. I'm yes. sold. I have I'm tears sold. in my eyes. It's, yeah. it's just that was that was hilarious. It's a great yeah. movie. I've seen it a couple times, and it's a really good movie. It's a wild ride. So if you've not seen Sorry mm -hmm. to Bother You, mm -hmm. it's really good. And I love that it's funny, it's comedy, but they've inserted some real-life situations, which yeah. I think great comedy always does. Yes. Yes. Great comedy always illuminates well, yeah. opportunities in yes. society or real right. life. Comedy allows us to examine some of the most sensitive topics yes. and issues right. yep. and, and laugh at ourselves yeah. right. in those issues. Yeah. So yeah. I love this. Yeah. I also want to give a shout out to anybody who has, is, or will someday work in a call center. Listen. Because that is some of the toughest you yeah, have to part. Yeah. <laughs> And, and every time, and every time somebody calls me from a call center, and you know who it yeah, is, right? Sure. And they've got their scripting, and they get points for how far they go. Yeah. Like, I got time. I'm letting you roll, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm playing yeah. along because if that's your payday, man, like I yeah. respect what you are doing. Yes. All the call center people just call me. <laughs> just call I me. I will say, you know, in my sales experience, I started off in call centers. I've done door to door sales. I've done field sales. I've done consulting sales, yeah. right? And so, I will say that call center sales was like a masterclass of communication is. for me because when we, you know, there's so many studies that talk about for effective communication, how our brain needs so much data. Yeah, and right. a lot of that data comes from seeing the visual part of it. Mm -hmm. So being on a phone and, you know, before Zoom days, right? Uh, yeah. And I couldn't see the buyer. And so all I had- Was the audio cue. Yes, the yes. audio cue. And it was crazy how after taking so many calls over years, how I could keen, on, keen in on what you're talking about, like pace. the pace with which they talk. and. The slang, the mm -hmm. dialect, the local, yes. yep. all of those things. And it taught me, it, and the benefit of that being my training ground for sales was because they couldn't see me, I felt empowered to be as flexible as possible in my right. communication. Yes. Yes. So I felt like, okay, the game is my voice. How do I get my voice to build connection and rapport and to yep. make them feel comfortable and yeah. to make familiarity? My, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a skill set. It's kind powerful. Of draw them in. Yes. You're drawing them to you. Yes. And 
to your energy and listening for pauses. I mean, you just, you key in on so many things when yeah. it was just phone, yeah. phone experience. Yes. Zoom, of course, offers a whole other so yeah, it does. Opportunities yeah. and challenges, yes. right? Because now we, we come back to the visual, and sometimes there's a bias against yeah. or for, right. given that visual camera element. Camera on, camera right? off. Right? right? Yeah. Absolutely. So now that we've uh, seen the satire on the voices of call centers, let's kind of go from comedy to something a little bit more heart-wrenching, okay. right? Let's, let's react to Will Smith and the pursuit of happiness as he does a phone call. Mm. I'll see you there. Click that next video. Bye.